All right, so hi Facebook, <laughs> we're live. Um, I am Maureen Minto, for those of you who are already acquainted with me. Um, I am your healing companion. And uh, this morning we're looking at um, healing empowerment. And uh, um, as I have made mention before, it is a time for us to empower ourselves. Uh, when you look at a nation that has been, um, I'm going to say, devastated the way that we who have been taken and um, us Africans have been. And I, and, I, and I have to be so delicate in choosing my words because, of course, we know um, we have Africans who have been taken from the continent. We're just realizing that there are some special groups among Africans, the Israelites, and I'm borrowing terminologies, but um, uh, Africans, Israelites, um, together, and, I, and, and uh, the audience continues. <laughs> but um, we are still in the atmosphere, in the ambience of celebrating our 400 years of um, enslavement. So wherever you find yourself, it has been promised um, in the Bible that there is a special set of people that would have been taken from the continent and would have been enslaved, would have been taken from some place and enslaved. And, 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 and like I say to persons unapologetically, that the only set of persons that I know that have been taken from anywhere and have been enslaved are um, seriously enslaved um, for a long time. Um, and have been brutally dealt with the, is, is, is the Africans. And of course, we call ourselves Africans, Hebrew, Israelites, Arcadian, Ethiopians. But the list continues. And this morning, I'm looking at healing empowerment. Healing empowerment. Um, it is time for us as a people to truly become empowered. Um, when we look at all that is happening around us, we do have... Um, lots of genocide that is happening. Our abortion rates are very, very high, so we're really killing off ourselves. And um, we have lots of things that are now being used um, to destroy um, melanated people, black people. Um, so our food is a part of our poison. Our medicine is a part of our poison. And I guess um, some of us, where we live, we have become toxic to where we live, so we're like cockroaches that are being stamped out by the dozens. And then I read um, on Facebook, somebody posted that we're now being fed rats for pig meat and cow's meat. And of course, the, the, the genocide continues where, you know, different diseases, the herpes, the HIV, have all been thrown at us to kind of destroy, um, to reduce our numbers. Um, but all of that we know about, and we've accepted that it would happen. But one of the things that I see coming strongly at us is a lot of persons who are trying to get into our minds and telling us how to think and, and what to think. And there's a lot of, um, lots of different techniques, mind, um, controlling techniques that are out there. Um, uh, most of it is a bid to get money, but nonetheless, it's going to control a lot of your minds. Um, the Bible does warn, the Bible, the Torah does warn us about um, who, who we allow to become masters of our minds. Who do we allow into our minds? Who do we allow our minds to be transformed into? Because sometimes a lot of this information that we are going to gather is going to be transforming our minds. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm going to be talking about, empowering your mind, healing empowerment um, of, of the mind and the body. Um, I'm going to say, I think I qualify to talk about the topic. Um, one, because I'm a third generation herbalist. I'm African. I'm the original people. In my DNA runs the original healing stream because my people have been healers. And I think that's for that makes me qualified. And then another reason that makes me qualified 
um, it's my training. You know, I grew up very ill. I had to learn herbs from my grandmother and from other persons around me. I had to learn herbs from my mother. She was a big mentor. Um, each time I got sick, she would send me to go reap my own herbs and my own healing. And coincidentally, when other people got sick, she would send to me as well and say, go prepare something, and she would tell me what to prepare. And so I learned the traditional healing from my family, my ancestry. Um, so I, I, I am connected to the Most High. That should have been the first one, not sure. I am connected to the Most High. Um, in 2000 somewhere, 2002 somewhere there, when I just decided to leave the medical profession and come fully into the herbal industry, um, I remember confronting the Most High because I had four clients that died in the same year, and I said to the Most High, I'm not going to work for you unless you really teach me herbs. And he came to me and spoke to me and said, I'm going to teach you myself. And he has done an excellent job in taking me aside and teaching me the Jamaican herbs and the healing benefits associated with the Jamaican herbs. So I have the master teacher first, and then in my DNA flows the healing stream. And then um, from the healing stream that flows through my DNA um, comes the fact that um, I have an association with the living persons who also carry on the tradition and have helped to enhance what I do. I've been to medical school, as I said before, so I do have medical training. But I'm going to tell you, the, to crown all of that, um, the Most High, in his bid to teach me, he allowed me to become paralyzed. So in, in, in 2004, coming up 2008, I was completely paralyzed from my shoulders down. I wasn't able to use my hands, so I was quadriplegic. So I couldn't use my hands, I couldn't use my feet. And uh, um, after that, I've been through other motor vehicle accidents. I've, I've suffered from cancer, I've suffered from fibroids. And you just name the list of ailments, menopause, don't even mention that one. But I have been through so much. And each time my experiences have helped me to become a better person to help you. Um, I'm going to borrow this word and say to succor, to encourage, to comfort you is probably a better word. And to also to help you, to teach you, so that you are better able to heal yourself and to, uh, to, 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 to draw from the universe healing powers. All right, um, so we, 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 I would like to caption this one and say, call um, on the scripture that says, all ye are gods. And that's a very powerful one to start with. And the reason why I chose to start with that one that says, all ye are gods, is because it is true. The most I in creating us, he created us above the animal kingdom. So there's the dogs, the cats, the puss, and they don't have a conscience. They don't have the mind. They don't have the, the, the kind of relationship that the Most High has with us. They don't, ex they don't enjoy that kind of experience. And we're made above them. We're made a little lower than the angels. But, so we are kind of like in between. The most I use a part of the, the same substance that created the animals, so he used the earth and made the animals, but he didn't put his mind into the animals. And he created us with a spirit because he created angels, malachines, as a spirit being. And then in mankind, he, and this is something that he taught me, that in mankind he merged both the spirit being world and the flesh world together to create mankind. And this merger didn't, wasn't just complete there. He came now and placed himself, a part of himself, inside of man, whether we want to call it nefash, depending on what you want to call the spirit, the roach. And so he came and he placed himself inside of man. And this is why he could say, all of us are gods 
because he actually placed his God likeness within us. So all of us are gods. And because we are gods, we have access to a universe of information. All of us have. Unfortunately, we're not all called to be healers or to be accountants or to be businessmen or um, teachers. We all have our different calling. And as wide as the universe is with knowledge, he can empower you to fulfill your purpose. And uh, um, that's what he did for me. In a lot of the cases, he empowered me so that I could accomplish my purpose. Um, coming through paralysis has not been easy. It's been 20, 2004 to now. It's 15 years um, struggling with paralysis. And I'm still here. I give thanks to the most time. Um, and I've had to learn from him how to structure my diet, how to structure the foods that I eat, and how to keep my mind, especially my mind, because we are defeated first in our minds. So once your mind says, I cannot walk, you will not walk. And once the mind says, I cannot get over cancers, you will never get over diabetes, high blood pressure. You just name it. The healing first starts in the mind. You have to first be able to say to yourself, I'm going to get well. My healing is on its way. It has started. It is complete. You've got to be able to grasp it. And grasping it easiest comes from a communication with the Most High. So talk to the big boss, talk to him. Say, say Father, here I am, I'm sick and I'm your child. Um, you wanna make the people them laugh after me? That's what I did. <laughs> when I was going through the menopause and I felt the masses in my, in my abdomen and I thought the cancer had come. I just held on to my belly and I said, Father, are you going to make my enemies laugh after me? They have seen me, they have heard me testify of your goodness. Are you going to let me die? And I'll be truthful to you, he has been wonderful. He has, um, he has healed me. I remember once while I was there struggling, I had a dream or a vision and, um, that um, someone came, like I was using a fork to dig up, plow the land. And while I was there plowing the land, um, like an angel came, somebody bigger and stronger than me came and told me to lay down and I, and I lie and I lie down. And then the person now took the fork now and started working on my abdomen. Like they were digging out the root of the disease that was inside my abdomen. And the morning I woke up, a, a lot of my pains and discomfort disappeared. <laughs> I was telling you all of that to let you know how awesome the Most High is and how present He is and how effective He wants to be in our lives. But we've got to keep the avenues clear. We have to be sure of who we are and what our relationship with the Most High is. Why is it that I can come to the Most High and demand my healing? What gives me that right to go to the Most High and say, you know, I do that sometimes. I go to the most and I say, boss, big boss, I want to get well. I have work to do for you. And I can't afford to sit here in a, a weakened, um, beaten up state. I need to get well. Tell me what to do. And I humbly wait on him. I beg him sometimes. I plead with him. And then he answers me. But that's the big boss. You want to say God, you want to say Elohim, you want to say Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahuwah. Um, but he's the big boss. boss. He's the only true one, the most high one, the one that is Ekad. Um, and he, he, he really is alive and present and will speak to us if we allow him to. And if we encourage the relationship, just to keep our minds clean of a lot of the trash and the garbage. A lot of negative things. Stop watching a lot of things about sex and romance and that kind of thing. It keeps your mind very earthly. And then you're less able to tap into the powers of the Most High. You've got to allow yourself to get to the place where the Most High is. He's the center. He's all that you're interested in. And once you get there, He knows when you're there. And He comes and He meets you there. We can't serve two gods. 
if your job is the God, if your husband is the God, if finding a man is the God, if sex is the God, if a house is the God, if the car is the God, if the children is the God, the most high becomes jealous. He has to be the core, the center of your life for you to truly have that intimate one-on-one -on -one relationship with him. That's what you need to do. But because of time, I'm going to move on a little bit and speak again about the fact that um, one, yes, the Most High is our creator, sustainer, provider, but he also has our parents as a second creator. Your parents are creators, you are creators. So you actually, your parents gave birth to you. And the birth that your parents gave to you came from genes that are thousands or millions or whenever they're old enough. But they're not just empty genes. There are genes that are loaded with information. All your DNAs are loaded with generations upon generations of, of information that you can tap into. You know, very often we say um, we're having a deja vu. And pe people try to wonder, why, what is happening? Why do I feel like I've had this experience before? And very often I explain it to persons by saying, you could have had it, that experience. Maybe not in this physical life that you are in, but in, in the life of your grandmother, great-grandmother, grandfather. But somehow your genes remembers that you have had this experience before and has called upon that kind of a memory bank. The same thing happens when it comes down to healing. If you want to be healed, you have ancestorship memory banks within you that can unleash. Always remember that healing starts here in the mind. It starts in the mind. If you can call upon the healing energies, you just say, I, I, I know my grandmother was a healer. I knew she used to take care. I know that the knowledge rests within me. I know how to make myself well. Once you have that confidence, um, tapping into the universe, the Most High brings the knowledge, your ancestral memory bank, opens it up so that you are able to grasp information, to hold on to information, to find information, to remember information that is already stored within you. And then, um, it's you as well. So we've looked at the God-like um, nest of the big boss, the creator, and the God-likeness of your parents. And now we're looking at you, you yourself, your individual self. All of us are made as a complete package. Within us, all that we need to survive, we have it. All that we need to heal ourselves actually resides within us. Um, the worst thing that has happened to us is that we have been um, disassociated from this kind of information. We don't know, like the birds and the dogs who are able to heal themselves, that we do have that ability to actually heal ourselves. We don't know that. And the, what has happened, because we don't know that, is that we now have to run to everybody else for help. Oh, I'm sick. I need to find a gynecologist. I need an ophthalmologist. I need a podiatrist. I need a this and I need a that. But it's all within you. All of that healing exists within you. You are a complete person from the most high. And once you learn to appreciate that you are complete, and that you have within you all this healing power and knowledge. And that you can complement it with things that are around you. Then you are going to realize how truly powerful your healing journey is. Uh, well, I'm out of time. But um, that's our discussion for today um, on your healing powers. We do ask that you share, click, like, and share. Um, if you found any information that I have given just now to be of any value that you think might enrich the lives of someone else that you know, I think you should click and share it. Don't rub them. It's not really fair. So you have been given the opportunity to hear and maybe learn something. Click, share, pass it on to someone else. And at least, you know, it's motivational. So keep doing it.
keep picking, keep liking, keep sharing. Thank you.